How we doing ladies and gentlemen? This is Tanner with Woodgrain. You know the drill. If you haven't seen one of our videos yet, we do a number of design inspiration and step-by-step -step guides on how to create different unique wood molding walls. So this is yet another one. This one's a little different in the fact that this one's a solid pine all wood wall that is stained rather than painted. And we're gonna show you step by step on how to create this look. Like in all our videos, we always recommend having a plan. So that is step one in the process. I typically recommend for people to draw out their space and identify the look, feel, and design that they wanna go for. We, when we started this wall, I knew it was gonna be really clean, white. We have really modern type feel throughout this house. And so I wanted to do more of a modern or craftsman with a really clean line. So that's what we went with. We're calling this the Craftsman X. Dun, dun, dun. So guys, first step in making this a reality, I drew out more or less what I'm trying to create. We're gonna do a 254 stop. This is a solid pine molding by wood grain. And then we're gonna have a backer board, all pine as well. So it's gonna be framed in. We're gonna cut our, all our squares, which is gonna be the most tedious part. And then we're gonna frame those boxes with trim so you can kind of, so it pops and we can cover up all our seams. Feel free to draw on these walls. That's one thing that a lot of people would be scared of. You don't typically want to draw on your walls. This is all going to be covered. So I'm looking at doing four boxes across is kind of my planning and then three up. So I need to figure out my dimensions. So that's step two. Let's get to it. Let's figure out the width of our room. 103. And then I'm gonna go to my molding. So my molding's already in place. 95. Okay, we're set. Let's do this, we need out. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna draw my wall, I'm gonna break out all my squares. So uh, with a 95 and 1 4 uh, inch high wall, I'm gonna have three breaks. So that's gonna be about 31 and let's say 3 fourths is the measurement. So I'm gonna do three quadrants and then I'm gonna do the same across. So I'm at 103 and 1 4 and that by four is about 25 and 3 4 So. I'm gonna measure that out. I've already done my first. That's my 31 and three fourths to the ceiling to here. I'm gonna do one more and that should be my three breaks. And then I'm gonna do the same going across. So simply mark your wall all the way across. And the way you can check your mat, go from your molding. Okay, now that I have my marks, I'm gonna get my level, draw a line. So I am gonna use my level to draw my lines. This is my last one here. Make sure that bad boy is straight. Oh yeah, my grid is set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got all our panels cut. We're gonna install. We are using 18 gauge brad nails for with an air gun. So the good news is our lines match up, so we cut these correctly. But uh, 18 gauge, I'm gonna run my nails as close as I can to the seam so they're covered by the board. And less finish work. So the other thing I'm gonna do is Clean up my lines, make sure my lines are on front as well. That will help me place my boards once it comes time.
We're done with our backer board. The fun begins. We're gonna put up our trim now. So I'm actually gonna frame it all in. So that is where we're gonna start. And then from there, we can go and start setting our pattern. But I'm gonna do the top line. I'm gonna use uh, my level and I'm gonna get after it. So I'm gonna do a butt joint to join my moldings together. Um, I can make it look pretty seamless. Just the fact that this is a 90 degree cut on all sides. It's all pretty much a square. So you won't necessarily have to do a miter cut. You can do a miter cut. You're gonna look a little better. But uh, just for time's sake, let's get after it. So I'm gonna get my first nail in. Make sure that I'm all the way to the corner and go after it. I don't necessarily need a level for this one specifically because I'm using the ceiling as my guide. Let's see here, let's measure that. We're gonna do the bottom really quick. For this one specifically, I'm using my molding as the guide. As long as it's butt up to that, it's gonna be straight. Okay, so I've got my frame in, looks pretty good, super consistent. Now I'm gonna run my vertical um, strips that are gonna to need to be cut. And so I haven't really talked about the tools we're using so far. So since I'm doing this indoors, I have a miter saw outside, but I'm actually just using a handsaw pretty straightforward cuts. I'm not doing any crazy angles as of yet. So handsaw, I'm using a nail gun, air compressor, um, 18 gauge nails and about an inch and a half. Um, probably can go up to two inches if you wanted to. I will need my angle finder when I start doing my crosses and start making triangles. And then the other thing, once we get to the finishing stage, we'll talk about those tools, but that's pretty straightforward. I have some caulking, paintable caulking or stainable caulking. This is an almond color, so it's like a wood tone. And then I have my plastic wood. So this is really good for holes. I use mostly this rather than my caulking to fill things in. And then I have my sandpaper and then a palm sander as well. So that's kind of the mix of tools. We'll talk about staining, staining and painting when we get to that part. But uh, as of now, the keys to this to make this successful has been my level and my measuring tape. Those are two big, big pieces to make this happen. So we're gonna run our vertical <coughs> trim. Should it cut right? It looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by lining this up in the center exactly where I want that. We'll put that in. And then the key is using the level to make sure that my line is straight. Now that I can't really see my line, it's covered up. I got my first horizontal uh, piece up. We're going for a second. The key is using the level. So I have my lines drawn. Row on to the next row here. Same process, really simple guys. One thing I will say is you can actually use your hammer after the fact and lightly tap to if you feel like anything's not straight. This one was a little off, so I tapped that down and that worked really easily um, to make sure all my lines were straight for install. So, once again, level. So we're getting to the tedious part. This part's gonna be a little bit more intense as far as getting measurements and finding angles. But uh, one thing that's kind of helping with this, just the fact my profiles are so small, I'm using a essentially molding clipper. So this will actually help identify different angles and you can snip them. Um, you don't get the cleanest edge, that's the only downside. I'm gonna do some finishing work after the fact, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna focus on doing all of my sections across and then I'll have to do a even smaller piece to connect that to that, so to get my full X's. This is how we're going about it. So 
well, there's probably an easier way, but I'm making my first angle. I'm going over to my corner and I'm actually drawing out my next angle. And then I'll use, I'll use these nips to get them lined up. Woo. Make my second cut. And that should fall into place, let's see. Pretty good. So I put a dummy stick up here to see what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna connect it on that side. So what I wanna do is find my intersection. I'm gonna measure the full box. I can do it inside the box. There's my intersection. I'm gonna do this on every single one. Let's go over how we're gonna do these uh, intersecting um, sections. So, I think I talked about it a little earlier, so I have identified where the center of this uh, cross beam is, and what I'm gonna do essentially is make sure I'm lined up there. I'm gonna draw my angle. Make sure I'm lined up. Draw my angle where my cut's gonna be. I'm gonna make my cut. You can do this on a saw. I'm just doing it really quick with snippers. Let's see how that lines up. It's pretty good. And then I'm gonna see where that lines up. I'm gonna draw my other angle on there. And make my cut. Cross our fingers. Looks good. Come along, let's get the rest of this done. We're wrapping up our final piece to be installed and we are off to the races for finishing. So, this tool's been pretty handy for this project. Thin molding, like I said, the uh, molding clippers, snippers is a great resource. So, putting our last piece in, I'm lining everything up. Um, You probably can't see it, but there is quite a few gaps. Um, I'm not too concerned. I want to get as tight as I can, obviously. Um, as I go, I'm getting better, but I'm definitely not a professional by any means. But uh, we're gonna fill that in. So we're in the finishing stage. With finishing, this is step four in the process. We're getting close. We are gonna use um, plastic wood or some kind of wood filler. So there's a couple different brands out there. I don't know if I had one recommendation over the other, but uh, we'll use this to fill our gaps, our nail holes, and we'll go back with sandpaper. So we're gonna use about uh, 220 grit sandpaper, and we have a hand palm sander. Um, what's that, like I said, 220. And then we actually have a foam sander that we can get into the, some of the cracks as well. So that's gonna be our finishing stage. We're gonna get after it and we'll be on to kind of the final step, which is the painting or staining. We're gonna stain this wall. So if this was typical or standard molding, not solid pine, I'd probably just be using a caulking and all the seams and a uh, putty, but this is gonna be a stain wall. So I wanna kind of keep this as natural as possible. I'm actually not gonna seam any of my, I'm not gonna caulk any of my seams just because I wanna keep it natural and I want the stain to adhere. Um, so we're gonna get after it with the wood filler. 
So essentially I'm just putting it on my finger. If I can get it out. Just moving it on. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna spend a little more time on these gaps. Trying to fill those in. So my work doesn't look as shoddy. You can see this intersection. Uh, definitely not as tight as I'd like. We're gonna fill that in. So this obviously doesn't look perfect right now, but uh, we're gonna sand that up. And that seam will look a lot better. So I'm gonna have to do this with my whole wall. This will probably take me a good 30 minutes. And then we'll go back and sand, which is pretty quick, typically. I have got all of my finishing pretty much done. I'm gonna go with a palm sander and my foam sander and sand all this off to kind of make it smooth. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit more work than I normally do just because I can't paint over it. This is gonna be stained. So I'm gonna have to get into these cracks and kind of just make this look really clean. So let's get after it. This is a 220 grit pant sandpaper. Um, probably gonna need a couple pads to finish this off. So I've sanded off pretty much everything. My joints is where I'm gonna spend a little bit more time just because there's a lot of uh, seams coming together. I put one more layer of wood plastic here to go back after my sanding just to get it perfect. And I'll sand that off and we're ready to put my pre-stain on. So the other thing about sanding, it's one step we wanna to do to actually help with our staining process. It's gonna open up the pores of the wood. So this is kinda of helping us in our staining process as well. So it's kinda of killing two birds with one stone. So now that I'm done with my sanding, I wanna go back with a wet uh, damp cloth or a damp sponge. It doesn't need to be sopping wet. I'm just trying to get all of my dust off. So there's gonna be a decent amount of dust, especially on those lips where the moldings meet up. I want to make sure I get all that up before I put my stain in, or if you're painting, you don't want to do the same. It's time. So with the pre-stain, there's a ton of different brands that do it. Um, use whatever you want, really. I don't have a recommendation one over the other, but um, we are going to stir it up. We're going to use a rag, a brush, or um, a pad to kind of spread this along. You can kind of be um, pretty gracious with it, but it's pretty straightforward. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you put something down so you don't get it on your floors. Um, but like I said, this is actually gonna help adhere the stain better. It's not gonna be as blotchy, as streaky, and you'll have a better stained wall. So let's get after it. The nice thing with this too, you only need to wait about five minutes until you stain. Um, we're going to let this sit for a while just because um, we're running out of daylight here. But once we get this done, we will be staining tomorrow. But I'm going to actually plan out what I want to stain. I am not going to do one solid color. I think this wall is kind of fun and funky in the fact that it's broken up by triangles and boxes. So I'm going to take a photo and go on to my Photoshop and uh, play around with some designs to kind of see what would lay up really well for this room. Step five in the process is paint or stain. So we're gonna stain this wall specifically. I love the natural look, the lighter wood. Um, I think it's definitely on trend, but I wanna add some color to this. So I'm actually gonna use some color specific stain. So there's a couple companies that do this. Um, this one's gonna be like a blue, it's called Warm Navy. And then I like the simply white. So this will kind of have a wood grain effect. You'll still see the grain of the wood, but have a color that pops. So we're going to pick a couple of these squares strategically, and then the rest we're just going to um, finish and put a primer on it so it holds its color and doesn't get sun faded. So let's get after it. I've masked everything off. That's pretty key, especially with uh, new floors and all that. You're bound to um, have issues. So. Let's uh, start in this right corner. And a couple things with stain. Uh, we talked about putting the um, wood conditioner on. So the stain, pre-stain treatment to help the 
um, would not get blotchy or kind of miscolored. So with the stain, guys, I have mixed it. I want to make sure I'm not shaking these up. I will get bubbles. It's not going to lay up as cleanly. So I've shaken both of my um, stain treatments here. And I'm going to be really careful. I don't want to drip. I don't want to ruin the concept Ooh. that I'm going for here. And one drip could do that. So I'm using a brush, um, kind of an oil specific brush. So I'm using a stain brush. It's a little bit, uh, it's a nicer uh, brush. So I'm not laying this on too thick. Like I mentioned, I want to show the grain. I want to show that it's not just being painted. It's an actual stain. So um, I won't do a lot of uh, coats with this where normal paint, I'd probably be doing at least two coats depending if my boards were primed or not. So one thing will help you, I kind of plan this out beforehand, but I am going to step back and put a quick dot on all of the panels that I'm going to be painting blue and then do the same for my white just to kind of make sure that it's going to lay out right. This is where my next one's going to be. Uh, painted through these. As you know, stain typically bleeds, so I have some bleed marks that I'm gonna go back and sand really well just to make that a little bit crisp so it's not perfect by any means. And then I'll put my final coat to seal the wood on especially all this natural stuff. So we're getting close, we're gonna let this dry and come back um, in a couple hours. So guys, the stain on this has dried. You can see there's a lot of brush strokes, especially on the blue. I'm gonna go back and sand this and I mentioned that I kind of over um, I got some bleed on this as well, so I am going to go back and sand that off so it's crisp and we'll wrap this up. Let's wrap this project up. We are in the final stages. We have our stain. I went back and I sanded any um, excess bleed where I didn't want it to show and it was pretty straightforward, easy to do. Um, now I want to seal all of this. So I want—I like the color of this. I want it to stay. So I'm going to use some form of clear stain. There's a bunch of different brands that do it. Kind of a polyurethane um, protective layer. So smudge marks, fingerprints, sun fade won't uh, change the color or uh, get marked up over time. So let's get this on. We're going to do it with a roller, a brush, and even a stained glove. That was the last stage in the process and really we're excited how it turned out. So this room is definitely gonna pop for that bedroom, office, whatever it may be. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to We Are Woodgrain below. Um, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you know the drill. We have a ton of other videos and inspiration for other designs and looks for accent walls. Make sure you go check those out. We have a full library and uh, we appreciate you following along. Signing off.